Good morning, Lord. Thank you for a new day. Thank you that your compassion is renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness and your steadfast love, O oh Lord. I don't know what all is going to happen today and how much I'll get done, but you do. So I give this day to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Father. Energize me for your work because you know how tired these bones are. Awaken me to the wonder of your salvation and quicken my spirit to the reality of your work in my life. Lord, my mind is filled with creative ideas, but they're all jumbled. Holy Spirit, come and hover over my mind like you hovered over the waters at creation and speak order out of the chaos. Help me to cease striving and to trust that you will give me all I need today to do the work you've given me to do. You will be faithful to complete the good work you've started. And as I step out into my day, I declare your sovereignty over every area of my life. I entrust myself to you and ask that you use me however you see fit. This day is yours. My body is yours. My mind is yours. Everything I am is yours. May you be pleased with me today. Amen. My name is Yuri Jane Asbajang, and we are the first group, and we are going to talk about the lesson five, the instructional planning. So let's start. The lesson five, components of instructional planning. All teachers engage in planning, managing, delivering, and evaluating instructions. Planning instruction involves three steps. These are deciding what to teach, deciding how to teach, and communicating goals and expectations to the learners. And each of these steps includes specific tasks. And later I will explain that. So let's start with deciding how what i mean deciding what to teach number 1 assess the students skills and knowledge so in making decisions of what to teach educators have to assess their students skills level so teachers should identify which skills students have and which skills they do not have teachers assess students using tests observations and interviews and teachers use this kind of informal assessments along with the result of achievement tests to plan with their own instruction number two analyze the instructional materials so part of deciding what to teach is to analyze the instructional task because it is not enough of what students are able to do teachers must also know exactly what they want students to do number three Establish a logical instructional sequence. Task analysis helps teachers plan a logical sequence of instruction because students are more likely to learn if teachers present in, in presents materials in a clear and logical sequence. Because when planning the of what to teach, teachers must understand the acquisition of new skills depends on learnings of a lower level skill. So as what I've said lately, in number one, you have to assess the student's skills and knowledge because students have a different skill level. Number four, consider the classroom elements that may affect the instruction. In teaching students, teachers must also include the learning environment, a conducive learning environment. Just like, for example, knowing that the lesson requires the use of special treatment, so in science subject, for example, you have to, to experiment like that. So the convenient place or classroom is in the laboratory. The last one in deciding what to teach, number five, you have to identify the gaps between actual and expected performance. So as a teacher, you must identify your expectation 
and expected performance of your students. And by recognizing the difference between actual performance and expected performance, teachers are able to keep the instructional goal and objective realistic, neither too low nor too high. The second step of planning instruction is deciding how to teach. So this part, this is the time that you will going to use strategies or techniques on how you will going to share the lessons to your students. Number one, set instructional goals. So, the process in setting instructional goals is to establish the instructional sequence. The simpler or lower level skills, these lower level skills may be taught in logical sequence in order for the students to acquire the complex skills so most complex skills consist of combination of simpler to lower level skill number two select instructional methods and materials so you have to choose the appropriate methods and materials number three pace instructional instruction appropriately Setting up pace is also part of a process of figuring out how to teach. So when we say pace, it is how quickly or slowly does the catch of the students through the use of materials. Number four, monitor performance and plan instruction. So probably this is the most important part of deciding how to teach is monitoring the student's performance and then using that information to plan subsequent instruction. The next step in instructional planning is the communicating goals and expectations to the learner. Number one, involve students in learning or in learning. Students must involve in the class. I mean, Everyone should involve in the class because as a teacher, it is your responsibility to participate all your students in your class. Do not just focus on one student, but you have to catch their attention all. You have the power. Yes. Number two, state expectations. So, as a teacher, you need to state expectations whether it is a positive one or a negative because students have different opinions and observi on observations to the lesson that you share to them. And the last one is maintain high standards. Of course, as a teacher, you need to have uh, high standards to your students for them to actively participate in the class. So that's all for my report and let's proceed to the next reporter. Thank you. I am Arthur Nanias Batukal. I am your next reporter. I will discuss A.1, how do you plan for instructions? Describe to your colleague the process you do. First, let us know what is instructional planning. When you say instructional planning, it is synthetic selections of educational goal and objectives, and they're designed for use in the classroom or in teaching. So, instructional planning, nakaplano na dito kung ano ang gustong ituro ng teacher, ano yung kanyang goal or targets, at kung paano niya ito ituro. All teachers are engaged in a process of planning, delivering, managing, and evaluating. Planning involves three steps. The first step is deciding what to teach. The second step is deciding how to teach. And the last step is communicating goal and expectations to the learners. The question is, how do you plan for instructions? So, here in a process in planning and instructions. In deciding what to teach, there are a variety of methods to assist your students' priority knowledge and skills. But for me, the first step I will do to assess my students' skills and knowledge but giving them a pretest because through pretest, we access or measure the skill and knowledge our students have or the capability they have. The second step, I will do it to analyze instructional tasks. When you say instructional tasks, it is an activity engaged in by teachers and student 
uh, during classroom instructions that is oriented toward development of particular skills, concept, or idea. So, dito, we need to analyze our task na ibibigay sa estudyante or learners. Mag-isip-isip na tayo kung ano ang ipapagawa nating activity to help children build a strong understanding of a virus a key concepts and skills. The third step is to establish a logically instructional sequence I should plan of what would be the sequence or order in delivering my lesson plan para mimit ko yung expectation ko, para mimit ko yung mga objectives or goals. Ako dapat nakaplano na kung ano ang dagan or sequence sa ako lesson plan para diretso na siya. And also, a uh, proper sequence provides uh, the learners with a pattern of relationships so that each activity has a, a definite purpose. The learning environment supports all students to take a rest or ask the questions and make and learn from mistakes. The physical space, routines, and procedures and development of positive relationships create a uh, physical, socially, and emotionally safe, safe environment. So, ang environment good is makamotivate siya sa mga students na magtake ng rest. And kung ang mga tao sad sa environment or classroom, like teachers and students, is kanang positive ang, ang relationship or na ay maayong nga relasyon, makabuild or create good sila o safe ka environment kay okay man kaayo ang tanan so wala yung uh, mahadlo, maulaw o uban pa. Especially no, kay elementary man ta, atong tuduan, dapat maging creative good ta sa mga atong learning uh, material, dapat colorful good kaayo para makatch up nato ang atensyon sa mga uh, atong mga estudyante. No? And the fifth tip or the last step is deciding what to teach is to identify a uh, gap between actual and expected performance. And lastly, don't expect too much about students' performance from your variety expectation kasi not all students may participate instead of focusing uh, to a uh, negativities of how they respond but use some techniques to analyze their behaviors and how you instill to them what is overall purpose of your instructions and guide them with their tasks and achievements so that all throughout your session, they enjoy. It's also a demonstration of learning. Different methods from your instruction must appear so that we can access if they learn from you or not. Lisod ka ayo mahuman na lang ang topic tapos bisag gamay wala jud de ay natun-an ang imong mga estudyante. So be realistic. Perform a good quick Good day everyone. I'm Alexandra Alcha. So for today, my topic is all about the elements of effective instruction. So, student engagement paraphrase to the degree of the tension for UCP and TRS optimism and passion that students show when they are learning or being taught which extent to the develop of motivation they will have to learn and progress in their education. When students are engaged, they are interested and invested in their learning, can explain the relevance and importance of their work, and their learning improves. Student engaged results from the wearing together of the following elements of effective instruction by skillful teaching in ways that promotes and facilitates student ownership and choice. The first element is training environment. The classroom learning environment supports learning for all students. This includes physical environment, the routines and procedures, classroom management practice, and the development of positive relationships that support physically and socially and emotionally safe and supporting environment for taking risks, asking questions, and making mistakes. Supporting belief in learning environments is first, the environment is shared domain between students, 
complementary and other partners in learning. Second is the learning environment is a space that fosters risk taking for students and teachers. Positive and meaningful relationship are the foundation of a productive learning culture. So the key traits of the learning environment first is physical space and routines. First are the clear and routines and procedures. Students know what is is expected when and why. Second, tools and materials are readily accessible to students. And trade the classroom can be confirmed and configured in different ways to best fit the task at hand. So the relationship and culture is first. All students feel safe that they create and participate in the class. Second, students have opportunities and support to build productive relationships with a variety of classmates. Third, students collaborate with each other throughout the learning process. Fourth, there are positive relationships between the teachers and the students. Fifth, being around is expected and accepted and used as a foundation for further learning. And six, the students are indeed and interested in what they are learning in this classroom. Seven, the students are involved and invested or invested are engaged in the task they do. Eight, the students reflect on their work and can explain their choices, strengths, and areas of growth. Second element is clear, shared, and outcomes. The learning outcomes are shared and understood by teacher and students. These outcomes are used as an anchor to guide entries of instructional activities, materials, routine, assignments, and assessment tasks. These outcomes are understood by students and used to prompt self-reflection and goal setting. So the supporting belief is first, everyone involved in the learning process must know where are we going and why the work matters. So second, teachers and students need choice in their learning experiences to be invested in unachieved outcomes. And third, a culture of reflection is necessary for students to set up and adjust personal goals. So the key traits of the, of the clear and shared outcomes first is learning outcomes are clear long term example graduation standards and the short term is learning objectives so second is there are clear description of what success looks like the third is the material and activities aligned with the learning objective fourth students can explain how tasks align to learning objectives fifth students can use the standard and learning objective to reflect on their own progress and set goals for growth Third are the varied context, materials, and method of instructions. So ideas and information are explored in varied ways so that the wide range of learners can find access points to the learning. Materials are selected and available to engage and accommodate all learners. So the supporting beliefs is different entry points, options, exploration, and end products are critical for student engagement and success. So the second is learner must see themselves represented in the material and connect to the content in authentic ways. So the key traits first is about the content. Students are exposed to new information in varied ways, inquiry, investigation, presentation, hands-on, and etc. Second, materials selected for instructional activities accommodate a variety of learners are narrated overall, visual modes are the varied reading levels, and etc. Third, students have choice and voice in what they learn. So next is the process. Students' groupings are varied and intentionally match to the activity and learner. Time and structure supporting reteaching and extension of learning as needed. Resources and materials are available and improve accessibility for a variety of learners. And fourth, students have meaningful choices to make about their learning and are thoughtful how make those choices well. And students use varied methods, use differentiated homework, reading activities, and support technology to advance in their learning. So next is the assessment. Students use varied supports including technology to demonstrate learning. 
Second, the students have choices about how they demonstrate their learning. Third, there are varied pathways available to students leading to common ends. So the fourth element is complex thinking and transfer. Students are coached and taught to engage in higher order thinking through instructional activities and practice tests. Assessment are designed to prompt complex thinking, integration of concepts and ideas and application of learned skills to new material situation. So the supporting belief is first, every student is capable of complex thought, higher order thinking promotes students and engagement that is the second and the third is learning that promotes transfer of knowledge and skills prepare students for the future key treats is students are asked questions that help them access and integrate knowledge to analyze this phrase second students are asked to wrestle with complex and authentic problems and treat Students are taught how to integrate and apply what they need to learn and are given opportunities to practice. So the fifth element is practice and feedback. Students are given opportunities to practice what they are learning and given timely feedback based on their current performance in relation to their desired outcomes. So the supporting belief is First, learning is a cycle that includes mistakes, multiple attempts, difficulties, and course corrections. Second, timely, specific, and varied feedback is a catalyst for growth. And third, is productive practice and noble application of skills are essential for learning. So the key traits is first they are opportunities for students to practice and receive feedback built into learning activities. Second, students are taught how to interpret and use feedback in their learning. Third, opportunities to practice and demonstrate essential skills and knowledge are available throughout a course. And fourth, students revise essential pieces of work as a time and resources allow to demonstrate growth and proficiency. So that's all of my report. I hope you've learned a lot and thank you. Good morning, classmates. Good morning, ma'am. My name is Arthur Nanyes Putukal. We will discuss about the nine events of instructions that has guided trainers and educators in gaining instructions for training classroom-based According to Robert Gagney, we have the nine events of instruction. Number one, gaining attention. Number two, informing learning of objectives. Number three, stimulating recall of prior learning. Number four, presenting stimulus. Number five, providing learning guidance. Number six, Eliciting performance. Number seven, providing feedback. Number eight, accessing performance. Number nine, enhancing retention and transfer. I will report one to four and Mom Alima five to nine. Number one, gaining attention. According to Gagne, nine events of instruction. Gaining attention is important or kukunin muna ang attention ng mga audience or listener before tayo mag-go for their instruction. Grab the first of the ear of the learners. You can present some device or treasure or entertaining until you get their phone. After gaining their attention, number two is informing learners of the objectives. Inform them about your learning objectives. Tulungan mo sila para maintindihan nila kung ano ang kanilang posibleng matutunan during the whole session. Techniques for starting the objective is to describe kung ano ang kanilang kayang gawin at the competitions of the session. Number three, stimulate recall for prior knowledge. You can begin to help the learners make sense of the new information. They can connect with their stemma by relating sa mga bagay na alam na nila or na experience na nila. 
para ma-accomplish nila ito, according to Robert Gagne, ay matutulungan natin sila to stimulate their prior knowledge. Lastly is presenting the stimulus. When we present them the new informations by using some of your strategies, is to provide also ng epektibo at mas maganda or madaling instructions. Kailangan din natin i-organize ang content na ating itatalakay para din na tayo mahihirapan na i-explain ang mga ito when we begin to demonstrate. The next reporter is Ma'am Liamy Alima. She discuss the 5 to 9 events of instructions. And the next one is provide learning guidance. We need to provide students with instructions on how to learn the skills. In that way, they can more easily understand the, the task and also provide some hints or cues to help them understand and remember what they are learning. The next one is eliciting performance. At this point, give students an opportunity to practice of what they have learned. And one of the eliciting performance are um, projects or activities and role playing. And the next one is provide timely feedback. Feedback is the only way your learners know what they're doing correctly and what they need to improve upon. And also, timely feedback can prevent them from developing misconceptions. Another one is assessing performance. In this event, assessment is the best way to test learner. And also, it can help learners understand what they are already know and what they need to improve. Lastly, Enhance retention and transfer. In this event, repeated practice with effective feedback is the best way to ensure that people retain information and use it effectively.